everybody, and welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. Today we're going to be doing something. If you if you followed our old podcast, guys like us, uh, you would probably consider this a mini episode, but we're going to be considering these full episodes because we've got a ton to talk about with horror. Um, just a heads up, though, you're not going to get any news from us, really. <laughs> no breaking news here, really. Uh, but we will just be talking about different things in the world of horror whether it's tv or movies and this episode will kind of this episode's a good example of those kind of episodes where we're not really going to talk about a specific movie or show we're just going to talk about everything that we that we see or think about with horror so we just wanted i wanted to start out actually um talking about really we we didn't really dive into it on our first episode we kind of just because that first episode was more of a transition from our old show to our new show And it was going to be broadcast on both. Um, But this episode, I just wanted to take kind of a minute and kind of just talk about, A, why we're doing it and why why horror is important to us, I guess. So I I think, or what like the meaning behind the show is, which is, to me, it's the subjectivity of horror and like what it means to everyone. Because everyone has a different opinion on it. Everyone. Like, if you look online, like... (laughs) I don't think there is a forum that you don't see an argument, and you can bring up any movie, and I think there's an argument to be made. People take people take your opinion on a on a horror movie to heart. They get so offended if it's different than yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I, I was actually I told you about this the last time we met. I was on a message board looking for quotes. Actually, when we were trying to name the show before we came up with uh, the very clever <laughs> yeah. and original the horror show, uh, we were trying to come up with quotes that would kind of fuel some sort of good name and i was on this message board of horror quotes from basically every movie you can imagine but probably more in the line of like the campy movies and they were fine quotes like horror movie quotes like the ones you could imagine were on there hail to the king and everything so it was a hundred of them if you can't find one you don't like whatever (laughs) like you're on the wrong website right this girl posted the most insane i wish i remembered her name it it was like the most insane ramblings she was so livid she said that the quotes were not scary the (laughs) quotes were not like they didn't trigger fear which i don't think there is a quote that i could read on a computer screen that i would be like i'm terrified i'm gonna lose sleep i'm gonna lose (laughs) sleep on this so i don't know what exactly she was looking for but she was pissed and this one guy like responded to her one kid innocently was like hey uh (laughs) You know, these are from like B movies and eighties slasher flicks. And he's like, So I think it was kind of like one of those conversations you have with your friends at a bar. That's how it's supposed to read. She lit this kid up <laughs> in a reply post. She lit him up. She was like, Well, if I wanted to go to a bar and talk about quotes, that's what I would do. I came here for horror quotes, and these are not horror quotes. Oh, I think her line was her her line specifically, and this is what got me really motivated to do the show. Her line specifically was like don't tell me about horror. I know what horror is. And the thing is, that could be true to her definition, but she does not control whatever this kid's definition That's what's so of horror nuts is. about it. Yeah. Like, how do you think that you control this guy's idea of horror? <laughs> you don't know anything. Like, it's no different. Like, it's like looking at a painting. Like, I told you once on my like personal Tumblr page in 2010, I had just seen Tetsuo, the Iron Man. And I was like, oh, I didn't really like this movie. And I, re- I received death, straight up death, stre- death threats from people. It's so wild. So that's really what I think the show is about really is I think it's just to explore that subjectivity. Cause I know we, I mean, we discovered it last week that we aren't going to agree on movies, paranormal activity being one. Correct. Um, <laughs> Blair Witch being two. uh but that's but that's what i think is like honestly the best part about horror is because you can talk about these movies no one should be ashamed for what they like no no one should and and there's a lot of shaming on on even news websites like news websites will shame you into being like like the new nightmare for instance the new nightmare on elm street yes you should be ashamed actually um (laughs) <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you enjoy that, the fuck stuff. I I don't I I don't think so. But what I what I think is funny is that that is like a general thing. So this guy writing the article was talking about remakes, actually, and 
he said, you know, what's your favorite guilty pleasure type of thing, which we're going to talk about actually today. We decided to talk about that. But the thing he said was uh, at the end, he said, you know, list them in the comments. And he said, except if it's Nightmare, the new Nightmare on Elm Street. He's like, because I can't defend you in that one. And people are probably going to tear you up. And the funny thing is, tons of people listed it in the comments that they liked it. They were like, they were like, don't really want to admit it, but I did not mind it. Like, didn't really mind it. I've seen, I've seen people say that they don't mind it either. It's and probably common before is a joke. I mean, like whatever the fuck you want to like. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. And really, we are going to bash movies. Like, <laughs> I'm going to shit on a movie if I if I hate it. Oh, like, yeah. Because that's just human nature. But in, in all honesty, it is all subjective. And honestly, I love hating movies, by the way. Yeah, me too. And honestly, if we say that we hate your favorite movie then tell us about it. That's like, that's what we want to hear. We want to, I want to hear other people's opinions. And if you do tell us, we'll definitely read them on the air. Cause that stuff's the best. Like <laughs> talking agree. about stuff, like it's, it's crazy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, kind of dealing with subjectivity. We're going to go into straight in kind of like a guilty pleasures. What is your f- guilty pleasure? Actually, let's, let's, can I ask you, did you like the new nightmare? Did you see it? I did see it. Uh, I don't think I hated it. I'd have to like rewatch it. See, that's a bad sign though that I don't even remember it really. It's probably I didn't like it. Yeah, that's probably. I probably didn't like it because I I I don't remember like a single. I I don't remember a single thing from it. It's um, it's honestly a blank spot in my brain. It was I I I saw in theaters. I think think it came out the same time that the remake of um. Friday the Thirteenth came out. It came out if I remember like a few months before. But so was yeah, it was right around the yeah. same time. Yeah, I don't know and which I one I hated summer. more, to be honest with you. Yeah, because I hated that new Friday the Thirteenth. I hated it, and I don't think I've seen that one yet. Let's watch it. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's. <laughs> let's let, I mean, that's what we should do. I we I want to I want to revisit some of these remakes because then I, I started thinking about what my favorite guilty pleasures were, and it kind of became what my favorite remakes were. And uh, I'll start you off though, because I think this might be one of the best. Dawn of the Dead. Disagreed. Really? I think it's didn't awesome. Like it. You didn't like it? I, I, I can't wait. No, no. Let me take that back. It was okay. I would watch it. But I love George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. I do too. I did not like the new changes that they made. I don't know. I'm just kind of an asshole like that. I, I feel a bit like, well, you just don't like blah, blah, blah. Well, No, I mean, there's something to be said. I mean, it, it, it depends, I guess, probably when you saw those movies too. So... I think if I'd seen Dawn of the Dead earlier in my life, the, the original one, yeah, yeah, I it might have been more, I might have been more pissed off at the original. But I saw Dawn of the Dead way later because my dumb brain, when I was a kid, went to I watched Night of the Living Dead. Then I said, "Oh, well, what do you think comes next? Got to go with Revenge of the Living Dead." And then I went on that weird tour and. <laughs> and never never ended up going you know what? i didn't really like the cover art to dawn of the dead and i think that was part of the reason i never got it i didn't either it I was didn't like u- the ending it was ugly yeah but i mean it's not it's not a bad one but i like i liked the new one i liked the remake i, I, mean, really I didn't did. like the ending on the new one oh yes one. oh the ending yeah that one was iffy uh do you have anything do you uh my favorite remake of all time is john carpenter's the thing which is a remake from a 1950s sci-fi th- okay so that's really funny. So I saw that on somebody's list, and I couldn't find the original. I was like, the thing. I was like, are people talking about... Not the 2011. That's what I was thinking that was people were talking about, but they kept doing the uh, 80... What was it? 80, 80, 82? 80, oh, earlier than that? Oh, okay. So 82. Maybe. Yeah. So people were putting whatever date it was in the 80s, and I was like, that's a remake? I couldn't find the original. Yeah. The original is uh, from the 50s. You saw it? I have seen it. Is it terrible? No, it's pretty good actually. I'd recommend it. Who wrote the thing? That not is not John Carpenter. Question. Right? No, no, because the orig- right, original from the fifties. Wow, right? that's weird. I did not know that. I thought that was a John Carpenter like original. No, nope. That's wild. And that is it, I mean, the thing's one of the best movies ever. Wow, 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 ever, wow, wow, wow. So, so be my number one remake of all time. So I would probably agree with you then. That's that's amazing. Like, because that's a really good that's a I've never seen the original, but I mean the thing is so so it's fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking in, Kurt it's insane. Uh, Kurt Russell is straight up one of my favorite actors of all Me time. Me too. hundred percent. Everything he was I in, in the mid eighties, 
I love him Classic. so much. And his fucking hair is... <laughs> it's pretty fun. Yeah. I have a huge man crush on Kurt Russell. Dude, yeah, me too. He's like second to Michael J. Fox for me. <laughs> um, so now we're going to... I'm going to... I'm, all right, so I got a couple other ones. The, the original is called The Thing from Another World. Sorry. I oh, weird. Up. Okay. From and it takes place in one. the Antarctic or wherever it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in the Arctic. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, look at that. The more you know. I don't want to watch that, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to go with that. It's the, the I mean, the, you don't need to see the original if you've seen the 80s. One. You don't need to. You could just forget about yeah. it. But. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's important because John Carpenter obviously loved it enough to want to. Yeah, that's pay crazy. To it. That's awesome. Now, all right, so I'm going to tell you one that's probably I'm going to tell you one that's not offensive, <laughs> and one that's very offensive. Okay. Two people that people will like shit their pants over. Now, I just want to be clear that these are just like these aren't like our favorite horror movies of all time. These are like right. Gun to your head, pick a remake. Because guess what? Most remakes are pretty terrible. Right. The thing sounds like one of the few exceptions. I think I asked one about my sleeve that you probably... All right, go with another one from you, because I'm about to, like... The Fly. Okay. Jeff Goldberg. I heard that also. What do you mean? Was that an old one? Yeah, from the 50s. Yo. Guys from guys from the, the fucking fly. 80s, stop fucking remaking shit from the 50s. Like the original had Vincent Price in it, and oh, I man. love the original. The 80s one is so terrifying, though. Dude, fucking Brundlefly, dude, classic, fucking scary as I, shit. Honestly, I want to stop recording this right now and just watch the fly in the thing back to back. <laughs> just call it a night. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I will when I go home. <laughs> we're we're both on vacation, and we've already started drinking, so. <laughs> Oh, by the way, yeah, if you hear us drinking, uh, if you hear some gulps, it's because we're going to start drinking every show. <laughs> See how that plays out for us. <laughs> Probably terribly. <laughs> uh, but we're, to this, today we're drinking Mayflower Brewing Company's Winter Oatmeal Stout. It's from Plymouth, Mass. So if you're listening from a nice, nice little plug you're giving another up. state. Uh, yeah, well, you know, got to – I think I have to say they're not a sponsor – for some legal reasons, but they're not a sponsor. I wish they were. So Mayflower, how at your boys <laughs> get in at the ground level. <laughs> get in while the going's getting good. <laughs> All we need are six packs. That's about it. That's it. But it is. It, I mean, this is delicious. But uh, I'll probably be drunk in about. I haven't drank in like a year, so. <laughs> I'll probably be drunk in about five minutes, and <laughs> you'll know. You'll you all know. It's already starting to kick in. Uh, but yeah, I would love to watch those again. Like now, it's now that we're triggering this stuff. All right, do you have any others that you think you're going to blow my mind with? Yes, but let's hear yours first. All right, that's true. Let's let's let it, let's just go on a high note so when people complain, they'll like forget about the shit that I'm about to say <laughs> and get overridden by like real good stuff. So they're just like that guy's just an idiot. So next. All right. So these are in no particular order. These are just off the top of my head, yeah, my favorites. Okay. So I should probably do the worst one first, right? Let's hear it. Do you know it was on my list, right? You, so did you read it? I did read your list, but I don't remember. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, well, 2003. You know, I don't think people would be that mad about it. You don't think so? I, I, I saw a group of people that like legitimately were like, I love this. I know a lot of people that loved it. I loved it. And I, I love the original, too. I just think it's two different. I mean, the original is just so, so damn good. The original. So here's what the original did better, I think, is. But it was a different time period, too. So the original really convincingly made people think that they were watching the way it dude it's so like, grainy so, so gritty. Fucking it's like just, watching a documentary you're just like i remember the first time i watched that i watched it like four times because i loved it so much like i couldn't handle it even the sound that that old oh, camera clicking, my god it's terrifying the, the 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 guy the homeless drifter that they pick up at the beginning scene the guy cuts his hand. Made me uncomfortable every single fucking time I watched it. I, know. I watched it like legitimately four times, like in that week, and every time I like just felt gross. I felt like I was watching something I shouldn't be. That's what that was the appeal, and I could not agree w- more with you. Which is why I don't hold the remake in such high standards. Because don't get me wrong, the remake's not a bad movie, and the remake was just. I guess the only word to describe it is just more modernized, like, like right. bigger budget, like bigger gore. Yep. And I that's fine. I like that in horror movies. But the first one was just, like we said, so gritty, so real feeling. I, I agree. And I think it's just, 
I think one of the reasons I like it is kind of so like for example, I watched Star Wars, the first one with my son, or I tried to, he's two years old. So <laughs> I just we watched like a half hour, but he liked it, which is good. We're gonna try and watch it every Christmas, the whole series, but we're <clears throat> totally off topic. But <laughs> so we were watching it and it's so cheese. You know what I mean? Like like the padding on the stormtroopers <laughs> looks awful. Like to the point where it's just like that looks like and like a, a butter knife can go through that. Like that's not armor. Like, but you know what I mean? But in the, I mean, in the seventies it was fine, but like there's part of you that you don't want to see it remade, but at the same time, wouldn't it be sweet if they just could somehow just remake it and like with the technology now without, yeah, but didn't, didn't Lucas do that without he remastered it all to make it look better. That's garbage though. It I, is garbage. I have the remastered one. Also. I do too. Yeah. I have the hatchet version and the remastered version. And I prefer the hatchet. Like, it's so good. The feels and it's so good. But but there's still something so cheese, which is still fun for me. Just like I know Texas what you're saying. Chainsaw. I think that's why people like the new one. That's why I like it. It's just it's it's like that thing where it's like, wouldn't it be cool to just see this without? Because like there, you come to an age where you're just like, not that Texas Chainsaw is cheese, but it's just. They could have done this a little better, like with a little bit more money. You're it right. It could have been crazy. And I agree. But like I just said, that's what kind of what I like about the originals is that it's so cheesy yeah. and like low budget. Yep. But my my problem with most of these remakes is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not unnecessary, but like you have these big budgets and you just made a really good movie. But why not like tweak it a little bit and just be like, this is just an homage to movies like Texas different. Chainsaw. We'll call it a little bit different. I agree. Like Like Evil Dead. Yeah, we talked, about. We, we talked about that, where it should have just, just been titled like, something yeah. else. <laughs> just a fucking scary cabin in the woods movie. And, and the weird thing about that is Evil Dead, I just didn't even think, had the name recognition. To like, like, I feel like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, you say that to even, like, your mom, and they at least kind of know yeah. what it is. But, like, Evil Dead doesn't have that name recognition, so I didn't understand why they were like... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm, that was I a mean, weird decision. Horror fans obviously know that, so yeah. that's what they were going for. But yeah, it's true. That that's just my problem with it. Just trying to make some a little bit more original and just come out and be like, oh, this was just an homage to like our favorite movies, and we just wanted to roll with it. Yeah, I agree. It's I liked it though. Um, so I'll follow that up with Night of the Living Dead. 1990. That's also on my list. I love Tom Savini. I met Tom Savini. Didn't real, know he directed that. Real good dude. Uh, real cool dude. I love his effects. And his effects are awesome. I thought the remake was great. You know, the original is a classic, but just upgrading it from the black and white into color and with a little bit more gore just made it perfect. It's shot for shot almost, right? It's very similar. Yeah, I, I always thought it was shot for shot, but that was that was honestly just based on... The hundreds of time I watch it. And I mean, to the point where, I mean, when I was young, I was really young when I was watching those. I shouldn't have been. Uh, but I was really young when I was watching those. And I remember, I didn't even know which one came first. I mean, I was like, I, I know one was black and white. And I maybe it was because I was seeing the Tom Savini one in black and white also. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought one. But I do remember distinctly being like, Oh, is this one new? Like, but um, yeah, I love those. Yeah, maybe no, I was just confused. That's a great choice. That was on my my list as well. Yeah, that's a great one. What else do you have? I have the Blob from okay. the nineteen eighties. The original with Steve McQueen is great. I, I love, love both it. of them. They're so good. That that's probably right up there with night. When was when was the new Blob made? Uh, that has to be like eighty eight. Okay, I'll, I'll look it up right now. But um, yeah, no, that that's just interesting because that was like the same situation with Night of the Living Dead for me. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, this is in color too? Like, see, see that's movies amazing. like that, I feel, are like appropriate to be remade. Like the flight, anything from like the 50s with like an original idea, but with yep. no makeup or no Literally special nothing. effects or anything. Literally go nothing. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Literally nothing. Like the original, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, the Bob was uh, 88, starring uh, Johnny Drama. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. I hate that guy. <laughs> Entourage does. I'm sorry. I don't hate that guy. I hate Entourage. <laughs> Entourage sucks. Yeah. He was really good in the Doors movie. I'd never seen that. Well, who did he play? The drummer, John Densmore. 
Oh, well, that's interesting. The more you know, Sean. How many more do you have on your list? A couple. Okay, I have a couple to... I'll just go into my next one, yeah. which is Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which has actually been done a couple of times. I'm talking about the one with uh, Donald, Donald Sutherland. Sutherland. Dude, love that movie. Wait, no, wait, wait a minute. Donald Sutherland. Wait, wasn't that Puppet Masters? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. The Donald Sutherland... What? Wait, what? Have you seen? <laughs> Hang on. All right. Talk about talk. Let, let, all right. Talk to me about um, Body Snatchers for a minute. The remake because I have seen it for sure. I, I, don't get me wrong. I've definitely seen it. I came out in 1978, and I the original came out in the 50s again. I'd have to look up the exact date. I probably should have done that. Oh, the remakes from 70s. Yeah, 78. Really? Yep. Oh. Starring Donald Sutherland. Jeff Goldblum's actually in that as well. Okay, so that's funny. So I've probably seen the original way more than I've seen the the one from the seventies. I I don't know if I've actually seen the one from the seventies. Wait, you've seen you've seen the original from fifty six? Yeah, my dad. Well, so we should probably talk about this too. Like, where did we get into horror? At what point we got into horror? But my dad was the reason I got into horror, and so I had to watch a ton of garbage <laughs> from the fifties, which. I shouldn't say garbage because I never minded them and I still like them. Yeah. But it, they weren't that good. So, The Day the Earth Stood Still. I love that movie. Vision of the Body Snatchers. All those type of movies. Them. The Blob. Them. <laughs> them. A lot. <laughs> Owned it on DVD. Like, okay, so we bought a DVD player like when DVDs first came out. So there's like nothing even available. Somehow my dad managed to find a DVD copy <laughs> of them. So we had like them. And WrestleMania 15 on DVD. <laughs> that was like about all we had <laughs> for the longest time. Oh, and the Spawn cartoon from HBO. No. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Those were, but that's all we had. <laughs> Not a very family friendly house. Uh, but um, yes, yeah, so I, I think I've only seen the original way more than I've seen that remake. But I swear he was in a movie called Puppet Masters that was, a, that was very similar to Invasions of the Body Snatchers. You're not you ta- know, you're not talking about the puppet master with the the little toys. Right? No, okay. no, it was way more of a. Um, well, I'm glad you've seen the original. Uh, if you haven't seen the one with Donald Sutherland, it's fucking fantastic. Again, I would stop right now just to watch it if you asked me to. I, I feel and it was like- remade again by Abel Ferrara, the guy who made uh, Driller Killer and um, Bad Lieutenant. I didn't mind that one either. Okay, so yeah, it it is it is called Puppet Masters. I I, I I thought it was, but then when you when you Google it, all that comes up are those stupid fucking puppets <laughs> from from the other Puppet Masters, which probably everyone else is pretty more uh, familiar with. familiar with. But yeah, and it was definitely Donald Sutherland, uh, and it's very much like Body Snatchers, which is crazy. So I might I I might have just blended yeah, the, the two synop- together. The synopsis says the Earth is invaded by alien slugs that ride into people's backs and control their minds. So this it's is amazing, pretty crazy. That he was in both. Yeah, this one yeah, came out in ninety four. They were probably like, hmm, let's yeah, rip off a I'd movie never... and use the same guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Box office gold. Box office gold. Um. So yeah, so. Uh, where, why were, why were we talking about puppet masters? Oh, we cause you were talking about invasion of the body, of the body yeah. centers. Okay, good. Okay. So yeah, that, I mean, I'll, I, I should probably rewatch that though. That, I, I know I've seen it though. Definitely. All right. So what else do you have? Anything else? Yeah. I got a couple more. Okay. Let's hear rattle them off. Yeah. I have the ring. Okay. The one we with can, Naomi Watts. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> you don't like it? No, I like it. Fine. I think everyone kind of likes it. Okay. That's just kind of like a... I think that one's just like out of necessity. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't want to read subtitles, sweet. so let me just watch this one. Although the original I, is far superior, but this one's pretty good. It's by the dude that made uh, the Pirate of the Caribbean movies. Is it? Yeah, Gore Verbinski. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. I love when they get a good director for a horror movie. Yeah, me too. It just changes yeah, the whole thing. I think that came out before all the Pirates of Caribbean. Yeah, it did. Yeah. 100%. I have, <laughs> I have Piranha 3D. Oh my god! I mean, I get, in terms of like, <laughs> in terms of like upgrading it a tad, <laughs> mind you, I'm only talking about graphics because special well, <laughs> effects because the acting has not been upgraded. The Piranha 3D was phenomenal. That was like the most fun I've had in a long time. Wait, was it three movie. double D? 
No, that movie sucked. <laughs> Wait, so the sequel was called Three Double D? Correct. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> That's so terrible. I don't even know what to say about it. It was it, it was terrible. Paul Shears in it. Paul Shears. I was uh, <laughs> Paul Shears Paul Shears in the first one. Yeah. In oh, he's not. In the he's not one? in the second one. Oh, or he was. maybe he is, but. I thought he like came in like maybe. I thought every I thought David Koshner's in it. The guy who plays Coach in oh. uh, Anchorman. <laughs> I thought I thought that the thing was he's talked about it before. I think he said he every every movie he dies, but somehow he's in the next one, <laughs> and he plans on being in the next one also. He's like, I have to be in it. Like they just keep bringing me back and making up some excuse about how I lived. I was dating my now fiance for about two weeks. <laughs> And then Piranha Three Double D came out, and I made her. I, mean, I ordered it like, and watched what it. What the like, fuck? <laughs> what the shit have I done? <laughs> do, do you ever remind her of that? I don't. Well, I don't want. I don't like reminding myself of that. <laughs> well, that's a, that's kind of our list. Oh, you know what else? No, I, I, have, I have a couple more. Okay, so you know what else I had on my list? I just saw The Shining, the made-for-TV movie. Yeah, I like that as well. That was. Dope. I remember as a kid, I was like, this is amazing. Because that was more what King had more uh, saying. And yeah, and I never really, as a kid, I didn't really like The Shining. I like it now. But as a kid, I was was just a little, I don't know what it was about it. Just maybe a little too much. Or I always loved it. Yeah. But I did like the the made for TV. I'm a huge Stephen King stan. So yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Except Night Flyer. Wait, are you talking about the movies? Oh, I'm talking about the movies. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not a big Stephen King movie stan. I'm a Stephen King book, like I like reading his book. He is. Wait, what's a stan? <laughs> so you know the Eminem song "Stan"? Yeah. But you've never heard someone say that before. No. If you stand about so something, like you're you just, writing like, a letter. <laughs> yeah, being a, a huge fan. <laughs> And then you, you know. Is that a thing in this world? Yes. I can't believe you never heard I've that. never heard of it. You never? <laughs> I think you're spending too much time on Reddit. Is that, is that a Reddit thing? <laughs> oh, my God. That is crazy. Okay. So, Stan, I'm going to start using yes. that more often. Yeah, I, I've been using it for like four years. I can't believe you've never heard me say I, it before. I think it should. I was probably like, dude, this guy can't pronounce Fan. <laughs> fan? To save his life. What's the matter with this guy? The first time you said it, I was like, is he going to correct himself or is he just going to let that one ride? <laughs> All right. I, I think I'm going to start using that. I like that. I think it's a good term. It is. Because there's that next level of fandom. You know what I mean? Like yeah. That next level. Yeah, I like, like you so much, I'm going to murder my girlfriend and drive off a bridge. <laughs> yeah, in your honor. <laughs> yeah. Looking just like you, dressed up as you. All right. All right. Um, so what's your last Ma- one? Imagine dressing up looking like Stephen King with those huge glasses <laughs> and that haircut. People, people would be so disturbed. Letter. People would be so disturbed. Like way more disturbed than the actual Stan. Like, oh well, he kind of looks like Eminem, but like to look like Stephen this King. Guy, this guy made himself look like Stephen King. You'd have to go so far out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. All right. uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I right. have a Little Shop of Horrors with Rick Moranis okay. on my list. Yep. I have the Hills Have Eyes remake. Which I like the original a lot with West Craven, yep. and I give the original the edge because it has Michael Berryman in it, that silly looking man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Uh, I have, this is not... <laughs> that's silly. <laughs> that's mean. I'm sorry, Michael. I ha- This is not a horror movie, per se, but it is a remake, and it's Cape Fear with Robert De Niro. Directed That's by Martin re- Scorsese. Oh, I didn't know that it was a remake. Yeah, yeah. with uh, Robert Mitchum and uh, Gregory Peck as the original, which is a great movie. But I love Martin Scorsese, and I love the remake with Robert De Niro. Yeah, no, that's that's a really good one. I think it's one of his most underrated movies, actually. And I think that kind of that kind of brings me to my next question, which is like, what makes a good horror movie? Because like Cape Fear, you're right; it's not necessarily a horror movie, but in my mind, I probably would rank it in. In a horror movie list, I might. I mean, well, I, like, yeah, I have no problem loop, like lumping it yeah. with these ones. Like what? So, like, what? What makes a good horror movie for you? Like, what do you look for in a horror uh, movie? Definitely. <laughs> I, I, I'm, by the way, this was Joe's question, and I was curious if he actually had an answer for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I caught him off but, guard. <laughs> 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 
I'm a big fan of gore. Okay. Like the gorier the better. I like yes. it over the top. I, I love like just the ridiculousness of 80s like cheese movies where mm-hmm. it's just gore for the sake of being gore. Yeah. I love supernatural. So even if so it's like not a very creature. gory, if it's something yeah, like a creature, like just something like something that could be out there that you know is probably not, but then yeah. when you go to bed, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Why am I afraid of a critter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A round little thing with a porcupine, essentially, running around my house. Like, why am I afraid of it? I'm going to throw titties on my list. You know, Got the more, to. The more titties, the better. As our theme song says, the triple Bs, what is it? Boobs, blood. Boobs, bloods, and bees. I, I bees, guess I pretty boobs, much just named those. Yes, you named yeah. them. Uh, which is, I think it's true. I think they're all true. Um and the atmosphere, like whether it's the setting a tone, whether, whether it's the score or just like the pacing of the movie, that that makes or breaks it for me. And that's where I think Cape Fear kind of is like a good point of that, where it's that ap- the atmosphere in that movie is very much like a fuck, yeah. Like what would I even do? I would just kill myself. Like by the way, one of my favorite scenes in any movie ever. This is a true story. Any movie ever is in Cape Fear when Robert De Niro is watching Problem Child in the movie theater. <laughs> he's just smoking that cigar and laughing really loudly. And I can watch that all day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'd have to agree. I think, so we've been talking about how we're going to start ranking some movies. And we were talking about doing something like a like a gore score type of thing, like a almost like a report card. And we, we, we were debating kind of like what we should rate them on. And I, I think that's right. I think boobs is good. <laughs> Just because it's in every single one, with, with, without a doubt. Listen, you go to the theaters to watch a horror movie. Are you going to pay the money to see a PG-13 movie no. or an R movie? R movie. R, because it's going to have more gore, it's going to have more titties, and it's going to be <laughs> scary all day. And it, 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 so when I was a kid, you know, you're, you're obviously watching the boobs for different reasons, because you <laughs> don't have access to them. Yes. There was no internet, kids. Just remember that. <laughs> Today, though, it's funny, because I still look for them. But not in like a sexual way, almost at all. I'm just like, yeah, it's you just like part feel of slighted after. It really it's is like there. the triple yeah. Bs. It's sort of like this like holy trinity of like elements that you need in a horror movie, and it's just like that is a good point that you just made though. There was no internet, so like horror movies was a great way to get like oh, it was your one exposure. Of, to it was the one of the only. It, hey, Revenge. Of the Living Dead oh, again, Leanna Quigley. That's Return of the Living Dead, not Revenge. But oh, oh, oops. Yeah, that's what I meant. Return of the Living Dead. Uh yes, she was super naked in that. She was crazy <laughs> naked, and uh, a top rental in my my house. Yeah, for sure. Because you could either watch horror movies, try and find a nudie mag in the, one of the bookstores, and try to take it out of the sleeve, <laughs> or you could turn on the Spice Channel and wait for like one nipple to show up. <laughs> that, that is that pretty much sums it up, but. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's it's almost like it's almost like akin to like the gore where it's you know you're not you're not a psychopath if you want to look at somebody's head get cut off in a no. horror movie it's, it's just like these boobs are just kind of there it's just like this element that just makes it a fun yeah and that's why I love horror it's movies part of the it genre. takes you away from that like I would never want to decapitate somebody no <laughs> but I want to watch some I want to watch it happen in a fucking yeah. horror movie yeah like, and I'd probably not want to watch it in real life either but. No, I definitely. I like. I like. I almost like the fake stuff. Yeah. Well, I almost <laughs> like the fake stuff. So the beer is kicking in, everyone. I, I'm not going to acknowledge that statement because that statement made no sense. <laughs> but you know, the 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 fake stuff. I mean, the over the top fake stuff is like much more what I look forward to than the super realistic. Yeah. Gore. Hell yeah. So, have you seen? Uh, well, this kind of goes with the remake. Have, have you seen Maniac, the original? No. Well, it had some great gore. I scenes. saw it and I don't remember it. It was that during shotgun the shotgun scene. Of- Dude, Tom Tom Savini is the greatest of all time. Yeah, he really is. I, I really when think that dude's so. Head blows up. That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in any horror movie. I've I've seen. I remember renting it, but it was at like you know when you're a kid and you watch it with friends and then you just pass out because it's like yeah one a.m. and you pop in a horror movie and you just fall asleep. I think that's what that was because I don't remember it really at all. But I have seen the new one, which was horrifying. You know, I have in, not seen it in a scary way. In a very scary way, it is s- scary. I heard I heard really good things about it. It was it was scary in the sense that it was like a little too realistic of um, portrayal of like a serial killer. 
which I love serial killers. Have you seen Henry? I did. That was that fucked me up. When I, was I don't there. like it. The, maybe maybe I don't like it because it's so fucked up. It's kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a sense that it's almost like you're just watching a documentary on this. I'll dude. tell you what. If if that actor wasn't Michael Rooker, yeah, if Michael Rooker hadn't become as famous as he has <laughs> more recently in the last few years, before I'd seen that, because uh, I only saw it recently. Had I seen that when I was a kid, I'd probably I did see it as a kid. I'd probably be fucking ruined. Is where did you find that as a kid? Was it at the the video store? We had a so Sean and I grew up near each other, and we had a sweet video store. And I was actually going to bring this up. I miss going Cheshire to video. Dude, I, I miss Dude, going. You there. gotta see the covers of the artwork, like the the the, the cheesy eighties covers of VHS. Great. The horror section at our video store was huge. Mm-hmm. I'd just go there. Like I wouldn't even rent movies sometimes. I'd just go and like browse and just. It was a giant look. aisle. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would always go there just to look. So, yeah, because we would ride our bikes down yeah. close enough. Yep. I would just go there just after school and just look at the horror movies. Be like, man, I can't wait to watch this one. And I try and find someone that, whose parents would uh, rent yeah, it for. Yeah, them. that was the that was the hard part. I just remember that because I was like, why didn't I rent more of them? And it was because it was trying to There's find no someone to rent them. I dude, I could not renting wait. freaking hooker was not going to happen. <laughs> So for anyone who's listening, hopefully they had the joy as a child in the 90s or late 80s. No, it had to be 90s. Yeah. Um, of going to a video store and seeing the VHS box of the movie Frankenhooker and pressing Frankenhooker's titty. So she says, wanna, was it wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? <laughs> wanna play? It was the best worst box I've ever seen. It's the best box ever. <laughs> I met. I think I told you this. I met the girl who plays Frankenhooker a couple of months ago, and she yeah. was like, "People come out to me all the time with the VHS," and she's like, "Would they have me sign it?" Just like on the spot. You did it. It's amazing. And she told you that everyone steals it. Everyone was stealing yeah, it. Yeah, she's, she's like, people just stole it from the video stores and they're going out of business. Which is what our mutual friend did. Also, he stole it because <laughs> we would go there. It was like always there. And when the video store closed, he was like, "I'm taking this." Like, what else? They were probably going to toss it. Yeah, they're not saving those. No. There's nothing in it. Yeah, Fire, styrofoam. Oh man, that 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 cover always brings me back. Like I can I can though I can visualize that horror section. Like that, yeah, that's something that. Don't get me wrong. Ne- uh, being able to watch a movie at any time I want on Netflix is like the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, but this generation, the upcoming generations, like they're not going to have the same experience. They're There's not. something about going to there, just looking touching at the posters it. and like touching it, picking it up. Do you know how the long I waited to watch "Make Them Die Slowly"? It was in a huge box. It had Dude. a warning on it. And oh. Ever since I was in like fifth grade, I was like, I gotta find my way to watch this movie because I knew it was on like the bottom row. Dude, all I the wanted time. to see it so bad. It was the most humongous it was box. A huge box. Yeah, and it had warnings all over it. Dude, I, I remember like, that. I could not wait to get my hands on it for years, and I finally watched it. And, you know it. It probably is not that good, but I loved every second of it because it was just like you've been waiting up so sexual long. frustration, and I just nutted as soon as I saw it. Oh my god, it's true. I hadn't thought about that box in so long. That box was enormous. I'm so happy you remember it, dude. It barely fit in the show. Dude, there was no other VHSs next to it. I remember specifically, like I'd have to get down on my knees, or not on my knees, but like in a squatting position, and I'd pull it out, but I wouldn't pull it out all the way because, like, I really felt. I was I was chicken shit, but I really felt like I was going to get in trouble for looking at that because there were so many fucking warnings. There really it. was. We're not exaggerating. There were so many warnings. I don't know if that was the same in other video stores. I don't know either if they just put it on. But this one was. It was I remember, shout outs to Greg. Hopefully he hears this one day. His mom finally rented it for us. Oh my God. It was no like eighth grade, <laughs> ninth, maybe maybe it was even ninth grade because we still couldn't get our hands on it. Well, I would hope like I would hope an adult. Like, thinking about it now, like, I don't think, thinking about it now, I would hope an adult would look at that and be like, that's just a fucking gimmick. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think it was warranted to have those disclaimers on it? So, I'm a huge fan of Cannibal Holocaust, and I think they're pretty similar. Yeah. I think the Cannibal Holocaust is, you know, superior and probably more brutal. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Do I think it was warranted? Probably not, but I'm also probably super desensitized now. Yeah. So, like, if I was a 12 year old and I just walked in and I took that movie and I hadn't, and I that wasn't like a horror fan, I was like, yeah, oh, you, had, you hadn't done I, any yet. Yeah. You need to definitely you know be built up. To maybe, that. <laughs> maybe it was warranted. Yeah. You need to have at least seen a few slasher flicks to get there. Yeah. I mean, it, 
I only saw that one time. Like I said, it was like a glorious experience because I just waited for so many years. Yeah. And it was pretty brutal from what I remember. I remember a scene where some chick was hung by her tits. The fucking what? hooks went right through. Oh, them. my God. Oh, I wait. Yeah, I, I remember people talking about that. Like, that was like... That was like lore. That was like <laughs> that was like playground lore. Probably because of you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so so I, I I guess I'm with you on on what makes a horror movie. I think I think there's some other elements to it though. And I, I don't know like again, it's just subjective. I don't know if you could have a scorecard really for it. I think you could discuss it, but I think those three B's are pretty important to like the core of the movie. I mean there's of course going to be the psychological ones, um, but I think that kind of goes into the beast category, you know, like how because even if it's psychological, somebody has to be a monster, whether it's a human or not. Yeah, no, I you agree know what I mean. So yeah. I, I don't know that that's that's an interesting question. I, I I honestly don't know even what my favorite style of horror movies. Definitely not, definitely not like gore porn, yeah. like definitely not that stuff, like. Like, Hostel never did it for me. I loved the first one, but... I liked it. But it, it wasn't like... I, w- I was not in the camp of, like, yeah, this, the is, so- what, this yeah. is the future of horror... Mo- and and I, what's funny is I think it kind of gave horror movies a bad rap because I think people were saying stuff like... Like, critics were like, if this is the future, then we're all fucked. Not that critics ever give horror movies a shot anyway, but I think people were under the assumption that that was the future of horror and... Yeah, that, I mean that was at the it time died out so when fast. Saw was releasing twenty movies. Do you like time. Saw? I did. I, I did the, too. The yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I haven't seen it in so long. I would love to go through all of them. I don't. I, I stopped at like three. I think. I think I stopped at four. Yeah. How many are there? Six. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you know what? I can tell you exactly which one I stopped at because I was like, this story is just getting out of control when. It was the one spoilers. Um, not, so hopefully you've seen some of. I don't know what to even say. Like it had to have been three or four. Let me put it that way. So if you haven't seen three or four, just skip ahead a few minutes. Uh, the one where his what his he he has he's going to have a child. Jigsaw. Yeah, and <laughs> his his wife. I'm has like, coming back to me. His wife has a miscarriage, or so, something along those lines. Uh. It's like flashbacks to his old life, right? And Jigsaw has like cancer. Yeah. And I was like, I've seen enough of this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, and this goes with like my Assassin's Creed philosophy too. I'm done with the fucking backstory, the behind the scenes. I don't give a shit about Jigsaw anymore. <laughs> I've, I know what he just, you know, brief stuff. Give it to me. Yeah. I just want to see the setups. I just want to see like the Rube Goldberg fucking yeah, I'm killing with, shit. I'm with you. Like when they when they were getting into miscarriages and it's just fucking terrible. Like that's not fun. That is like the worst kind of horror movie, a real life horror movie. Like, oh yeah, this happens to people on a daily basis, and it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. It ruins people's lives. <laughs> like, I just give me the fucking monsters and song your own I, foot I'm, off. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's an interesting concept. I will probably talk about it literally every episode. So yeah, I mean, because it's just it's so subjective. Now we can get off of the topic of you know our favorites and things like that, but I do want to end the show just really talking to you just about um, the movie you're next. Okay, you've seen it. I have seen it. If you haven't seen it, I will try not to do any spoilers, but you might want to just skip to the end. Of the podcast, I don't know, five minutes or so, but um, what a great movie! Yeah, um, I saw it last year, and I somebody told me that they liked it more than The Conjuring, and you know, The Conjuring was great. Don't get me wrong. For like best of 2013, for best of 2013. Okay, but, uh, this person I was talking to was like, "You gotta check out this movie. You're next. Like, it's the superior horror movie." Like, and I agree with it. The Conjuring was better made. Yeah. So. Uh, I, Fuck, how do I want to word this? I don't I agree with it, but I don't. Like yeah. Conjuring's the better movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I enjoyed yeah. Your Next more. Your That's Next was like super it. fun. It, it was like every it's pretty much everything that we just talked about in a horror movie. Everything that I like was there. I think it was I would honestly say it was almost perfect in in the sense of not like 
the best horror movie ever made, <laughs> but perfect almost in our categories. Because yeah. the gore was right. There were some boobs, not a lot, but a few. But sometimes like a kick-ass heroin is better than just straight boobs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like a girl slaughtering is just like, holy shit. Yeah. Like that's hot as hell. Like don't, I spit on your grave. Don't need to see your boobs. You're <laughs> you're the you're the shit. Like you just slaughtered people like nonstop. Yeah, she was awesome. Um, and just so the listeners know, I only saw this once and this was a year ago sean just recently watched yeah i just it, so watched I can't it the contribute so much. oh yeah so and, I, and we're not even going to get into it that much i don't, I don't want to ruin it for anyone because it was honestly awesome and it's on netflix so please check it out because it's so good and tell us what you thought about it so there's a few things that i loved about it the music was like straight out of an 80s b movie yeah, it was but redone it was so good it was like synth that's what i said before about the atmosphere and the and music, that set the music and score plays a big role in it. And when and and this was it was perfect for this movie because this movie never took itself too seriously. Yeah. And that music was just perfect. Yeah, no, it was it was absolutely perfect. I thought it was it was weird because it was very much a new a new style of horror, like a, a modern style of horror with like the hunting them down and kind of the home invasion type of aspect that we see a lot of right now. But when you put that music it changes like so the purge i hated I, I haven't seen it hated it hated it so much and it was in that home invasion esque that's that's the scare these guys are at your house and they can kill you yeah for no reason and get away with it so it's that aspect but when you put that different music to it that like slasher 80s b movie synth music to it it makes it a completely different movie it does it made it feel so different and it, it was incredible. And the heroine was played by Sharni Vilson, who's actually from Australia. She was badass in it. Uh, she had her. Yeah, she she had. No, I'm not even gonna give her any flaws. I, I she did have some, but I thought overall she was like absolutely amazing. Yeah. In the role. Um, the kills in that movie were great. The kills, the kills were good because they didn't go over the top early. You no. know what I mean? Like they were just steady and pretty simple. That opening scene, right? The the opening scene. I mean, this has been a while since I've seen it. Didn't I don't, a family get killed? Oh, oh yeah. Well, here's 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 what I thought was great. So, spoilers <laughs> again. One of the sisters tries to run out the door, and they have piano wire yes, yes. tied around it. So I'm I'm. This is one of the. I think this is the second kill of the movie. And she fucking runs. <laughs> she's running out the door, and it's in slow motion. And you're like. Something terrible is going to happen. I don't know what, but you never expect that piano wire. When you see the piano wire, you immediately are like, okay, is this when the head rolls in to the thing? Fucking cheese. Nope. Just a horrifying close up of a, just a slit throat. Yep. Fucking horrifying to look at. Horrible. So good though. And I, that's the way a lot of the kills are. They're just kind of realistic, but not too realistic. So a lot of slit throats. A lot of just yeah. fucking, and to go along with the rankings, this why horror is so broad, and everything that we said still holds true. But sometimes I love my movies to be like serious, and then sometimes I love movies like this where they're just like, I just want to drink beers and watch them. You know, what I mean, just like have fun and just be like, this was a great yeah. movie, and I, you know what? Honestly, wasn't scared really <laughs> at any point during it. Yeah, but it was just it was fucking super awesome. fun, fun to watch, movie. and you're yeah. really rooting for the, the female heroine. Funny note that I read, though, uh, the director is, like, pretty guarded about this movie. He doesn't, like, he doesn't want to do a sequel. He talked about, if he did make a sequel, what it would be about. And it doesn't sound like a horror movie at all. It sounds like a fucking law movie. Who Was it Wingard that directed Yes, Adam Wingard. <laughs> he said if he did do a sequel, it would be about her trial and them thinking that she did all the murders herself. <laughs> Which, by the way... I would watch the shit out of would that. ...would make no sense... Given the circum, there's three dead people in wolf masks carrying weapons. So don't don't think it would add up too well. Like like the court would be exactly. like, no, those guys were just there. They were just hanging out with the family. It's <laughs> just the way they. I would rolled. watch the shit out of it. Yeah, um, but he's great. Funny thing, he did. He was he he directed segments of VHS. Yes, he did the narrative of. The first VHS, yes. which is really awesome. 
That's so cool. That was like, honestly, that was one of the scarier parts of VHS for me. When I first put it in and you were watching them videotape them assault strangers for no reason, I was like, I don't know if I could watch this. But then it turned into uh, what it was. Yeah. And not to get off topic, did you like VHS? Yeah, I do. Did you see the second one? No. Then you haven't seen the one that came out this year? No. There's three? I, I, the one came out this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I wanted to watch it this week before I do my uh, best of the year list. I guess I'll watch it too. Shit. I don't think that will be on it. I don't but think I'm gonna watch it, it anyways. It might, that might be a, a waste of time. How good was that scene in the first VHS? The last segment, the haunted house one. Do you know what I'm talking about? That was wild. I love that. Yeah. I wish it was all like that. That was wild. I love that part. That the, the 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 special effect. I wish they just had a little bit bigger of a budget in that because the the special effects in the that house were yeah a little rough ski, but yeah. but it, but it was good. I, I that, mean, that part made me uneasy. Yeah. No. The, the, that that was a great movie. Also, I watched it at. You know, three in the morning by myself. Oh, and I just want to say one more thing about your next. Oh, yeah, sorry. The blender scene. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking awesome. Yes. And then, okay, this is a huge spoiler, so skip ahead again. Sorry, if, if this is a spoiler about your next. If you just skipped ahead to this, I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> when she's explaining to her boyfriend, who's the brother of the guy plotting the whole thing, and he's like, <laughs> that scene was fucking phenomenal first of all like her boyfriend trying to rationalize why he did this to her and she's just standing there and like the only time she talks to her he's like so where's my brother and she's like i put a blender in his head and turned it on <laughs> and he's like okay all right and where's z she's like i stabbed her in the head <laughs> <laughs> okay understandable like but when she said that that was that was i, I marked out so i stand out for that is that, is that my using that correctly no uh, okay good <laughs> Um, so the, but that blender scene was dope it was. and that's what I liked. Cause it, that was the payoff. So there was no, that was like the payoff. Cause like almost not that the, the other kill scenes were bad, but you're just like, I could kind of go for like a little more, like this is a little too realistic. It's just like kitchen knives and yeah. weapons. And then when you see the blender thing, you're like, no, yes, yes, no. And then it happens and you're so happy. <laughs> Did you see uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil? Yeah, <laughs> that's a great movie. I was shocked by that. I the, put that on like on a whim. Remind, made, made my mind go there. I don't even remember it. What do they oh, do? Just the, the kills are like over the top. Oh like, yeah, 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 like nonstop. Yeah. Isn't there something with like a wood chipper? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy's running. He trips into oh it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But I mean, I guess that. Listen. It's like once a year in this area that you see somebody get killed in a fucking wood chipper. So I, I, I can't say it's like yeah. unrealistic. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you think, how the fuck do you get chopped up in a wood chipper, man? Like, just stay the fuck away from the, the you know, hole. You know when you watch movies alone, it's like hard to like laugh, actually laugh out yeah, loud yeah, by yeah, yourself. Yeah. Like, it's, if oh, I was yeah, sitting yeah. with you, I'd be laughing. Yeah. When I watched that scene, I laughed out loud by myself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did too. I, I was so ridiculous. And, and but... Again, like you see that on the news, like some guy killed in a wood chipper accident. And you're like, yeah, why is that so popular here? <laughs> a lot of people cutting wood. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's insane, though. And like, the other question is still like, how? How do you <laughs> fall into a wood chipper? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Maybe they are all running like in Tucker and <laughs> Dale. They're like, ah! <laughs> they trip and fall into the wood chipper that's just running. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that's it for today. I think we're going to wrap this one up. It's been a pleasure to talk to you guys. Hopefully, this didn't bore the crap out of you. Um, probably have more structure into the next one. We kind of just wanted to give you guys a feel for kind of like who we are and what we like. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, before we go, I want to thank Harley Poe for letting us use Gorehound off the album Pagan Holiday. You can find him at harleypoe.com. Or Facebook.com slash Harley Poe. And you can buy his songs off iTunes or Bandcamp. And we really appreciate him letting us use the song. Yes. 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 You can find Joe. Where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at JoeV421. Nice. You can find me at, at Robots Ate Me. And you can find our website at IHateHorror.com, which is really not going to give you much. It's just really where the podcast hangs out. Or you can find us on Tumblr, which we want to be really active on soon, hopefully, at ihatehorror.tumblr.com. 
The biggest thing you guys can do to support us is rate and review us and subscribe to us on iTunes. We would really appreciate it. It really helps yes. us out because their algorithm is terrible. <laughs> so the more people that subscribe and rate and review, the higher we get up there and the higher we can talk to all of you guys. And uh, you can find us on Stitcher and iTunes, of course. Yes. And that's it. So we want to thank you guys. Adios. Thank you.